Okay, we're just going to get uh, started here. Drop down on my audio. And uh, everything seems to be a little bit off, but running a little bit smoother maybe than some of my other shows. Eh, we'll still figure it out. Um, Facebook didn't come up right away, but I got it before the show. Wasn't paying attention to the time, so my countdown timer was off. And I just realized my whole computer time sync is off and I really don't like that because it's Windows well that's pretty stupid because Windows is always out of sync for me no matter what I do I cannot get it in sync I have to manually manually fix that and it is so annoying Windows cannot get my machine right fortunately I live in the Linux world so when I'm not doing shows doing this type of work I am on Linux, Linux Mint, and that is the way it goes. So, the only reason why I'm, I've got Windows anymore is for this show. A little bit of water to get uh, to wet the whistle and to get going. We are talking about a controversial topic somewhat today, and that is AI. And I think I mentioned before that, well, let's just uh, throw this in here real quick. We'll just throw this in. So what it says here, love it or hate it, one thing is for certain, AI is here to stay. Now, we're going to talk about my thoughts and what I've been doing with AI in the last couple weeks kind of learning the ropes learning how to use it learning what's possible and it is a interesting very very interesting world now here's my thoughts AI is going to be what we make of it it can be good it can be bad it's up to us to train it to use it in a productive and good way now I know not everybody's going to do that because there are some really unfortunate people out there that just want to um, use it to their advantage and in a negative way and you know that's not the whole world and I think as long as we have it here it isn't going anywhere so we might as well make the best of it make it work for us in the best way possible now, I don't have my home automation system or anything like that. No, I'm not going to run my house at least at this point in time. You know, maybe a robot or two running around the house cleaning, doing dishes might not be such a bad idea. You know, AI, we can do that. We can program it. But, um, so here's going to be my thoughts. Uh, yeah, we're going to jump there. And, you know... I think the people that get into AI right now and understand it, you don't even need to be an expert right now. You don't need to know the down and dirty inside details of how it works and what it's doing, what it's thinking. Start using it. Start becoming familiar with it because it is going to be more and more part of our daily lives on our jobs in our homes you know and and here's the thing you know when chat gp chat gpt came out um really what was it november was it been out for a year now about 3.5 uh was november of 22 wasn't it that came out really kind of hit them hit hit the market so to speak Everybody was in uproar, you know, hey, you know, AI, it's a bad thing, it's the downfall of civilization, downfall of man. Well, it can be, yes, if we let it run our lives and kind of do whatever, you know, with us and, and stuff. But I think it is a, might as well use it. And here's the thing, it came out in, what, I think the big announcements were in fall or winter of November, uh, 2022. But, and everybody got in that uproar. But here's the thought. We have been, in ways, using AI for a lot longer than that. Nobody, it just kind of became part of our lives. Think about it. Siri 
and Google. Uh, uh, yeah, Google's uh, assistant. I can't even remember the name of it. Well, anyway, they've been around. They're AI based. It's like, yeah, this has been around. Yeah, think about uh, the Jeopardy. They had AI machine learning it. Really, the basics of AI. When it played Jeopardy, how many years back was that? When you know, wasn't it played against Ken Jennings and whatnot, and and won? Oh, didn't it win? Well, I don't know the whole story on that, but it's been around for a while. It's just now been more available to the public, more so, kind of thrown into the limelight, into the forefronts of public view. It has been here, but now it's here. So, whether you like it or not, you better learn how to get used to it and live with it. And as I said, you don't need to become the expert. I think you need to learn how to use it to help yourself, help yourself out of in, in many ways of education, of uh, you just kind of getting in ahead because the more you know now, the less you got to learn later. And you'll be f so much farther ahead of the people that are going to start later. You're going to be the experts. I'm going to be the expert because I'm learning it now. I'm, you know, I'm going to be so much farther ahead than somebody joins and starts to think, oh, well, maybe I should use it when they start thinking about it next year or in two years or three years i'm gonna already be using it and and creating creating great new possibilities and great things so you know it is here to stay and i think we need to embrace that so just double checking to make sure we are live on all of our media and yes we are so of course I shut off on my computer so that it runs much smoother. So here's what I'm going to talk about today. Chat GPT. Kind of the big thing. And when it came out it was 3.5. And what uh, they said it was trained uh, up to something like sometime in 2021 was when the cutoff of its uh, knowledge base was the data that it was pulling from so it didn't know anything from like that year on to newer well it's been upgraded now we are in 2024 we are in chat gpt4 and it has its cutoff date now is april of 2023 so less than a year's worth of knowledge is it missing so it's, been up, it's got a lot more knowledge than it did even a year ago and i've heard i haven't read the documentation but i've heard that chat gtp chat i'm gonna get that mixed up chat chat gpt5 from what I understand is going to be more real time. I could be wrong. I said I haven't read the documentation on it, but it is going to be even much more abundant in these resources that it's pulling from. Um, so, um, as you can see right here, let's see. I'm gonna pull this over. Pull up my screens here. Ba Boom. Let's uh, do a QB zoom me. And we're going to put me down in the bottom corner. All right. So now we are looking at the screen and what we have here. What version of Chat GPT is this? I'm looking at Chat GPT 3.5. It says up here. I am an instance of ChatGPT, a large language model trained by OpenAI. I was trained last on new data in September of 2021. So that is the knowledge cutoff date. 
and I went around to ask it and things. You know, I, I, I'm really interested in some coding that it can do. You know, I am interested in the Python coding and everything like that. So, you know, I'm like, okay, um, let's play some, you know, create some sample audio here. Um, so I just, uh, let's, let's see, uh, to create a, t uh, using Python wrote code that will create the tone of middle C. So blue, 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 the tone of middle C is 261.63 hertz in Python. And you can use the Pi Audio library. And here is a some sample code of on the middle C. So let's see, I don't know if this will run or not. I have, <laughs> that's gonna be the interesting thing about live here. Test things out right on the run okay. well they gave me a little bit of air um, oh import pi audio and I forget how to import into uh, into blah, 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 uh, the Python here I use in Jupyter notebook um, it's now run by anaconda so I need to brush up on my installing some of my um, modules here that I need. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we can run various snippets of code in here. It does create it, but it's like, okay, the only error it gave me was needed uh, uh, Pi Audio. You know, and I, I'm trying to remember, uh, was it... Uh, uh, Adion. Uh, let's see if that will run. Uh, it might give me an error. Is it going to error out? Is it going to error out? Yeah. There it is. It's getting Pi Audio. It's getting the package. I'm installing right up front, right here, live on the air. I may need to restart this kernel. Let us restart this kernel here and restart restart okay um let's so there are some some issues with it i this particular program i've never tried running before right now um so i was just that on the fly one of the things I did want to uh, try or uh, that I did try was a um, I created a oh, where is this a light meter let's see if I can bring this up here uh, properties let's edit a notebook so we are going to bring up my Control C. Let's uh, let's bring this because I do think when I tried this before, Control V, that we could. So what I did was I programmed this to be a light meter. I it was working at one point in time here. So what it was doing is taking my camera, one of my cameras, and I disabled one of my um, cameras right now just for this demonstration so we're we have only been operating on one camera anyway for this show so i decided to you know let the uh, computer have the other camera so we've got here um import cb2 uh import numpy snp um we're going to capture image um initialize the camera um and to, to output light intensity and zero is black 100 is full and direct day light sunlight let me run this real quick i may get an error but okay let's see why well, didn't give me an error What it's probably doing to do is going to give me an error because I think in the camera I'm using right here. Oh, wait, wait. There we go. Look at this right here. So my 
light intensity 36.79 let me zoom this out right here it's showing me light intensity is 36.79 now that's because I have the um, just the studio lights on right now I don't have any room lights on I was getting about 49 almost 50 uh, before so we are running, I believe, off just one camera. I'm going to cover this camera real, real quick, and we will just see what it changes to. It should go closer to zero, because I believe it's taken from this camera and not this camera. We'll see. Let me uh, cover this camera temporarily. We're going to hit the... We're going to run this again. And if it's this camera that it's working off of it will come back with a number lower than 36 31 so it's not that camera my bad let me uh, cover this camera that I was hoping I was gonna run off of let me do this again I'm covering the camera covering the camera and the interesting thing about it is not giving me the highlight saying or the uh, tally light saying that the camera's on so I thought it was the yep there we go I'm the camera I'm covered 0.67 almost completely black because my hand is over that camera now this is a functioning light meter I'm going to take my phone right now and we are going to uh, turn on the flashlight we got the flashlight on we are going to shine it into this camera at the moment and it is going to actually show much much higher number probably closer to daylight closer to 100 if not 100 so here we go thinking about it reading taking readings off my webcam that I got over here 97.5 so it is showing that it is working and here's the thing I didn't code this. AI coded it for me. It is a fully functional uh, program that was coded by AI. So I know that, yes, AI code can work. I was playing around with some facial recognition. That's kind of what I was working on before. Um, unfortunately, I cannot get that to work right now because import face recognition and import OS is not working properly for me at the moment um, so I was trying to do a pip install uh, face recognition and import uh, o or pip install OS and those weren't coming over so nicely right now into the pro my program so I haven't wasn't able to do it I have used facial recognition programs before where it puts a little box around your face right now it looks like everything will work as long as I can get these installed and look at all this code this I did not do this was all run by a I so you know you want to you have an idea to create something go ahead and create it if you can create something that you think other people are going to enjoy using let's create it be creative why not profit off of this when you can wait, don't wait till the market's flooded with uh, stuff that because people are generating tons and tons of content and programs and everything and just flooding the market with things that you're like oh man you know what I thought of that a year ago two years ago ten years ago and now that's like the hottest thing. I could have had that, and it would have been a great money maker. Maybe you just never know what the possibilities are right here using AI. So I am currently using a paid version of Chat GPT. It is, I believe, this paid version is like twenty bucks a month, um, which ain't bad especially for everything you get in chat GPT so let's kind of review and look at what you are actually getting in this program uh, now if you just go with the free version you don't quite get as much capabilities um, I'm trying to 
and I think you only get the the just the chat. You don't get all these other um, programs and everything. So with the yeah, okay, and with the unpaid version, you don't get 4.0. You only get up to 3.5. That's where I said, well, you know, let's get the paid version, get a little bit more uh, data stream here. So you can go in and ask it any question. You can um, use some of the prompts that's going to, it's going to prompt you if you just have an idea. It's going to say, okay, maybe we need to look at this a little more. Maybe we need to look at that a little more. Uh, expand on this, this uh, idea you have. It's going to prompt you to do this type of stuff and more. Oh, it comes with so many, many different AI programs. Open AI is has tons of different capabilities. Now, I can't say that I can go to, let's say, for example, uh, where was this uh, uh, video maker? I believe it was uh, Open AI here. I can't necessarily go and create a video for YouTube per se that is not watermarked unless I go ahead and buy another subscription to another AI. So this, a lot of these are links to other AIs that are going to give you a more refined uh, presentation. But lots of lots of different things we can do. So let's start back at the top. It's going to give you some featured uh, recommendations here. Um, talk about diagrams, artful greeting cards, um, different styles to, drawn to style, golf GPT. So you, your expert caddy for the whole specific golf strategies. Um, there, I'm not a golfer. I transform drawings into artistic styles and describe them. I'm not an artist, but you never know. I may be able to do a stick figure and maybe it will render something. Uh, customizable themed greeting cards with text. So let's uh, let's just see what this themed greeting card is here. Let's, uh, well, you know what? Valentine's Day was yesterday. Make me... Uh, 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 Valentine's, Valentine's Day card for my wife. Let's see what it can come up with. Give it a challenge right here on the spot. Let's just say here, well, let's go with, uh, asked, wanted a name. Okay, so it's creating a card. Here it's creating the image. Ooh, ooh. So it's thinking, it's going to create me a card. That's what I like about this. And if I don't like it, I could just uh, redo it a little bit. You know, that's actually a pretty nice card. Now I could take that image, take it, and I could just cut it out here, add it to cardstock, and I'd have a pretty darn good card. Uh, let's see. Um, Let's go back to the Explorer here so that we got cards. We can do images. I've got several of those I can show you. Uh, Mogul Creators Canva now has AI built into it. You can cartoonize yourself. Um, let's see, da Dolly data analysis. So you can uh, basically drop files in here and it will analyze the data for you. Um, writing coaches your own coloring book. I like Planty here. I've used that a couple times. Okay, you know what? Um, how the best do I take care of my... Let's, let's grow ginger in a pot. So 
let's ask it how we grow ginger in a you know how to grow a ginger root in a pot growing ginger root in a pot is a fantastic way to get a supply of fresh flavorful ginger uh, root right in your fingertips it tells you the steps choose your ginger root prepare your pot and soil it tells you what kind of soil how deep everything that you need to know it says soak your ginger in warm water overnight it tells you how to plant it uh, where to put it in for direct sunlight watering and care and then when and how to harvest so hey, you know what you can ask it about anything and it's going to come to you some type of answer and I think that was pretty good answer for that I think right here I do grow pineapple indoors I am growing a pineapple in a pot indoors what is the best care solutions that I need to know so here it is here's your light what temperatures it likes watering how often to water it how to water it what type of soil well-drained potting mix feeding here's you feed it during uh, its growing months spring through summer uh, potting and repotting and then better have some patience if you're going to grow pineapple my last plant took five years and gave me one pineapple hoping this next one goes a little bit quicker so it can chat gpt can tell you a lot of things just on general knowledge okay let's jump down here and i'm going to show you some examples of things that i was working on uh, we are 26 minutes into the show that is awesome let me jump over here real quick i'm just kind of jumping around i want to open another browser bow wow's a browser well that's the last night i'm into another browser i'm just going to do the same browser we're going to just drag it off the side here i want to see what uh how the stream is doing in my social media every once in a while i gotta check in on that i i feel that you know what can't forget about you guys i don't have a chat window up i am working at bringing in a chat window um, directly into my screen here uh, but i do not quite have that set up yet so uh, stream is still doing good and it is on let's see we're jumping over to facebook double checking everything right now and yes it is still good over here all right and i'm not purposely ignoring you guys uh, I, as i said i will be bringing up this, the chats uh, i use bmix for my uh, streaming software so i can bring both well any chat i want to into my streaming software and make it work without having to have my shows brought my social media brought up all right so we can do data analysis of planting image generate we're going to look at that here shortly um work with photos have writing help help you create slide presentations it will do that um, academic assistance writing professionals uh, productivity um, video GPT by Veed uh, help you build diagrams PDF is what secure restore and chat with all your PDF documents for free video makers web pilot so search browse write agent action and api offering research analysis consensus scholar so now you can actually go out there and, and learn uh, through a lot of documents finance wizard scholar here scholar ai we go into programming i've used the python programming here haven't really used a lot of these other ones so but I am working towards that and by the way I did not even mention that if you click on more I options more options it's going to give me give you more options than one the featured ones that are on the page so each one of these drops down a little bit more and gives you some more options I've been talking a lot opening I, I, API 
API, so I'm all for working with APIs. We're going to get into education, we're going to tutoring, um, math problems, code tutor, so you can learn about different things that you want to know about. And it's not going to sit here and just give you the answers on these. It's going to actually teach you step by step how to come up with the answers and learn the answers yourself. So you got to do it or you don't even have to pay anybody. Lifestyles, a little bit of Looks like travel planning, um, a moist companion, and let's see, gym streak without workout creator. So you got workout creator, um, literature, and big game party planner. So that was for that. Looks like for the Super Bowl party plan. So I, the Omnia also is one that. Uh, I use on my uh, cell phone. I didn't even see it down here, but if you open up Mia, it's going to uh, bring it in here, and you can actually chat with it back and forth. And it actually works pretty smoothly. It's easy to listen to, and it's going to give you answers. You can just chat with it, and it's going to give you answers back. Now, I don't know how well that works on the computer itself, um, because I'm not seeing anything with the, uh, yeah, i got to have glasses on to see some of the details. Um, but let's see, we'll work with Grammarly. You can add some uh, uh, attachments and everything here, but it looks like this is will be good for mostly on the phone better. This one, you're going to have to type out your questions and everything like that. When you actually have it on the phone, it will listen to you, and you can ask it questions. It's going to give you some pretty interesting answers. So, what have I been doing with chat GPT? Kind of experimenting, kind of seeing where it's going to take this. Now, I did some images. I've created a few images over the last couple of weeks here, and uh, I will have to tell you, it is very interesting in what it will create. Now, just by giving it a couple of phrases, a couple of sentences, it's going to create what you ask for. It. You can add more details to your picture and everything once you create the picture. And I'll kind of show you the progression I've got on a couple of. Uh, picture sets that I've got created. The thing that it doesn't do at this point, at this point in time, is it will not um, keep the same foundation of your picture. So let's say you have created um, a scenery some scenery with some, some mountains, you like the mountains and everything, you're just like, okay, maybe I want to add this road that winds up through the mountains. Well, when you regenerate that picture, it's going to be a completely different picture. There's going to be a road in there going up the mountains. If you say, please put me a road in the mountains, it is going to put you a road in the mountains. It's just going to be a different mountain range than what you had in the original. So you're not going to get two pictures that are exactly the same. And I'll show you that progression as we go. Um, but it does create some very, very interesting images. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. I did create a some stuff for YouTube here, kind of talk about this. Uh, I have a video here that explains um, some EMC squared, but well, let's see. But it's not going to run. I didn't bring my other computer in here to run some of my code or some of these videos on. And what happens is my uh, streaming software kind of blocks some of this video. Um, does that typically for copyright issues when it comes to YouTube and stuff like that? Um, they don't want you to upload or stream or have some copyright infringements, which is understandable, so it doesn't let you play certain video. Um, but let's go with an eagle soaring. We did the, uh, this 
was on Dolly here. So I said, great a photorealistic image of an American bald eagle flying between buildings in New York City. The eagle should be in the middle third of the top, from the top or bottom of the picture and the middle third from the sides of the picture. So what you can see right here in this image is right here. It did a pretty good job of putting the, the eagle in the middle of the picture. Kind of like the one that is on the right and better. Um, but they actually both turned out. If you want to see an expanded view of that, you can do that or here. Now, if you look at it, it's got some pretty good detailing in the eyes and around the head and everything like that. It really did a fantastic job. It was close to photorealistic. So I changed just with a, another sentence here. Um, extend the eagle's wings to show that he is gliding through the image. So this one kind of looks like, hey, you know what, I'm here. Just got to, I don't know how well it actually would fly like that. This one kind of looks like it's kind of floating a little bit more, which is what I think I was going for more so. I want to close this down a little bit here, uh, get rid of that side. So let's ex just blow this up just a hair bit more. Well, that's, that's about all I can get right now. Okay, so there's those images. I said create a jumping into another idea I had. So I got done with the eagles here, and I said, create a photorealistic of an eight-head warthog landing on a United States Navy aircraft carrier. The aircraft carrier should be the USS Enterprise. So Dolly, well, <laughs> this one is, gave me the eight-head warthog. Lots of other airplanes in here. Can't really tell that this is the Enterprise. Kind of a distorted picture. Yeah. Not really very often going to have an A-10 kind of flying, flying that close to the to the bow of the aircraft carrier at that altitude. And I did say um, landing. Well, this one actually looks more like it's taking off, not landing. So remove all of the airplanes from the image and just show the aircraft carrier. Well, it did remove the flying airplanes, but it left airplanes on the flight deck, which not a bad, not a bad look. Kind of makes it look like the uh, bigger than it probably would normally look. Um, show me 10 images. It tells me it will only do two at a time. Create two new images of an aircraft carrier. So it just gave me a couple more images. Love these pictures. They, I think they turned out well. Lighting on them is good, especially this one right here when the sun's coming out behind the clouds. But, uh, you know, I don't think either one of those are really too bad. So let's go back in and look at some other pictures. Uh, what was this one? Uh, I don't remember. Okay, <laughs> we're sitting there one evening watching The Simpsons, and I just, you know, had the um, AI listening on the phone to the show, and it was just kind of picking up little tidbits uh, here, you know, and, uh, what it heard. Here's so Lisa, you keep doing all the work. What do you think? I don't know. Tony might be startled by the loud noise. And then it kind of started saying it sounds like you're considering someone's reaction to a situation or maybe discussing a story or a scenario involving Lisa, Tony, and a loud noise. If you're looking for advice on thoughts on how this situation could be handled or interpreted, I'd say it's important to consider the context. If Lisa is taking on too much work, it, and then that was it. That was all it gave me at the moment. Um, listening to The Simpsons some more, the expression you have written seems to be, let's see, we'll go back up here to the beginning. Um, first I said, before it started listening to The Simpsons, I said, generate an image of a futuristic city. Definitely gave me a futuristic city. I do not know of any that look like that currently. Um, here is useful like hamburger ear muffins, ear muffs. 
that was something that they mentioned on the Simpsons, so it gave me literally your muffs that it were hamburgers. <laughs> kind of an interesting, uh, interesting scenario there. Kind of an in interesting look. Um, electric hammer for all you, your pounding needs. I think uh, Homer was asking, saying something about that. Created me a electric hammer with the breakout of all the different parts of it. Kind of like that. Pretty cool. Got a little battery pack on there. I think it's a pretty detailed picture. Just from my line, less than a lot of sense of text. And, and then here's another line from The Simpsons. The only time you were watching t TV and you hate and you hate your balls and have to get up and walk to the bathroom. I'm not sure what they're trying to say there. Uh, it was the hardest thing in the world to do, but now with the safety man reclining toilet chair, you can lean back and let it rip. Well, okay, he lost his legs, but uh, he got the toilet chair. Um, oh man, it feels pretty good in the in that car. Go cars, come on, everybody, hey, let's go. GPT-4, I'm driving. So it created an image. All from The Simpsons. Um, hey, you're cheating, blah, blah, blah. So I gave you some stuff there, more images, more images. Um, then I went into a image assistant here. I asked if it can record everything I'm talking about. Of course, I'm here to listen and respond to whatever you'd like to talk about, what's on your mind. Drop that at that point. Um, uh, the service now platform, I asked it for, on what we could do to create a gray box on a form. Looks like it gave me some pretty good code there. Um, we talked about some executable Python. Um, and then there is my camera based light meter here, the, the code for it. Then I have my facial recognition program that I am working on. Um, So then I was like, okay, I'm going to create a person. Let's jump all the way back up to the top here. And we just start out with a basic person. Uh, I said, create an image of a lady, and she must have the following, um, blah, blah, blah. There's the image. Um, then I said, uh, create a uh, can you make it more photorealistic? So it took the, art, the cartoonish out of it and made it more photorealistic. I uh, have her head down slightly, eyes open, and just another one little change, but it changed the whole image. Now you have a different person. Um, some more changes, uh, different type of dress, different colors. We went from the red to the green. Um, we decided to put in the Paris with the Eiffel Tower, which it did. And you, as you notice, the person in it changes every time. Let's change that to nighttime. Paris at nighttime. Uh, change it from a the green dress to a wedding dress. Did that. In Paris, now we said, okay, change background setting to a wedding arch. Have her holding a bouquet of flowers. Done that. Um, sitting in a boat and on the lakefront in front of the wedding arches, so did that. And so just kind of created, I was looking at a model runway show, a model fashion model. Not too happy with the way that one turned out. We went back to the wedding venues here. And it just, just little props here. As you can see, you have her sitting in the boat, sun at golden hour, boom. So it is going to take and put things in as you describe them. Now, what I did with this one, I wanted to say, okay, you know what? In the idea of of uh, the birth of the birth, so to speak, of 
AI. That's a new one. Let's create a creation story. So I created six images here, kind of like a representation of emptiness, nothingness. The heavens were created, suns rising above an empty earth. Now you have oceans, a mountain coming out of the ocean. Now you have land, and then finally land. I did put that into a one, basically a short, a YouTube short for a minute, about 90 seconds, and it created with 15 second videos. It created these into a, I put them into a uh, video and a creation story. Oh, I like the steam locomotive right here. Love that picture of a steam locomotive. And uh, I think that was the only one I did on that. Nice, nice picture, I'd say. I think I said from the 1920s. Pulling a tender car and passengers' cars that's traveling through the forest. Created a wonderful picture. I really, really do like that picture. Um, then we, uh, I did finish updating this one. Actually, today I was working on this one a little bit, but it started out with a photorealistic slender female dressed in steampunk. Um, in mid 20s, strawberry blonde hair. I would say that's a little bit more on the strawberry side. And have her standing in front of a steampunk steam locomotive in the 1920s. And then I said, have her looking straight at the camera. Boom, came up with that image. Now I went back and created another one. This one was great, another image, same style. It created, I got some hashtags, it created me some hashtags for my social media. This one is for um, Instagram, and then I had some that were created for Facebook down here. Then I continued on. I said, okay, let's throw in another person into this mix. Not really happy with the way that turned out. Faces are almost the same, but styles and everything. No. And then I just created this one, kind of what I thought maybe, okay, I'm going to try this and see if it will keep the same people, the same person in my image and just change some of the background. So I, she was standing on a empty train platform before I said, let's just add some people in there. So I did update my request here. And yes, it did throw in a completely different person than, than uh, see, because I said, uh, Image scriptures. Yep. From this one, where is it? I threw in a completely different person from this one here. So that image that I had originally, as you see, it was a two of two here. Can I go back to number one? Oh, yeah, there's the first one. So there's the first one. Added a little bit more. Because, you know, remove second. Remove the second one. So it did. And then that's, I came back, edited it, and I said, remove the second woman and more people in the background walking along the train platform. So it created literally a whole new image. So, chat GPT, a very powerful program, and I'm going to take a lot of time learning it, amongst all the other things I'm learning right now. now but I'm not going to let it sit here and run everything for me. I'm going to see if it can simplify some things, kind of automate a few things, but I'm going to continue to educate myself the traditional ways. I'm LinkedIn learning. I'm learning right now. I am uh, just finished a course on essentials of HTML, essentials of CSS, and I am almost done with essentials of JavaScript. So not only I'm not, I'm not letting going to let AI just create everything for me because I want to continue to use my brain. I want to think. Now, there are things that I may not be advanced enough at a certain point to create on my own. We'll let some of this AI stuff create that. It can get a little more complicated than maybe I've the levels I want on that. But I'm going to keep learning. I'm teaching myself Python. I'm teaching myself website design 
and everything like that. And I'm going to dive deeper into that stuff. My website should be up and running, fully up and running, by the end of the weekend coming up. So I need to really work on that over the next couple of days, um, amongst the hundred of other things I have to do this weekend. But I am working, I am programming things myself, and I am not letting AI do it all. Now, there are some things I said that we can automate, but I am going to continue to expand my knowledge, expand my abilities through educating myself. And some of that comes from educating myself on AI. It's not the terrible, evil entity that everybody thinks it is. There are going to be some downsides to it, yes. Just like there are downsides to everything. But I think that there's going to be enough good sides that it can help us, at least in the foreseeable future. Now, I can't say what it's going to be like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. I would hope that uh, the machine learning and everything is going to uh, remain a benefit to us. It's going to continue to help us out. I don't think we're going to be able to stop AI from infiltrating into our lives. We started that trend when Siri and and uh, all that came out. Alexa, when all that came out, we started the revolution of AI. Chat GPT in 2021, when it broke into the, the mainstream of life, really pushed it to the forefront. And everybody, a lot of people got upset about it. It's not going to, it's only as smart as we're going to allow it to be. It's going to be as evil as we allow it to be. And it's going to be as good as we allow it to be. It has no conscience. It's not going to think for itself. It cannot think beyond the information that we give it. With that said, there is a lot of crap out there on the internet that it is learning from. Some of the AI models that, uh, especially the large language, the LL, the LMMs and stuff like that, lar was it large language models, LLMs, some of those are being trained on personal systems, personal servers with millions of documents and stuff from companies and, and stuff like that. That's separate from ChatGPT and that's separate from the public um, chat AIs that are scraping the web. There are going to be, there are so many different versions of AIs. There are so many, so much, but it's only as good as the information we give it. Yes, there's a lot of crap out there on the internet. We're just going to lay it out like that. So where is this going to go? I don't know, but I do know for right now, I'm going to use it while I can. It's going to help me out. I'm going to learn some things. I'm going to do some robotics. Maybe I can get it to clean my house here. I don't know. Do dishes. Take care of my plants. You know, if I created a, a watering monitor and it just watered my plants whenever it, the soil got to a certain... Hey, I'm good with that. If I have a AI that's out there in my garden identifying weeds. I'm good with that. <laughs> Less weeding I got to do on the garden in the middle of summer, the better. I can let it weed for me. And we got stuff like that in farm fields. The farmers are starting to have that where they're using less pesticides and more lasers to fry weeds in crops. So it's identifying the crop plants and zapping the weeds, the undesirables. So there's a lot of good, you know, when we can use less pesticides, less things like that, because of AI, that's a win. If we use it right, we can save our planet. If we use it wrong, well, yeah, we can destroy our planet. 
is all really up to us at this point and how it works for us. So, with that said, we have been rambling on now for an hour. I do want to go down the road of AI a little bit more in the future. In fact, I'm really, really uh, contemplating, and I'm going to see how well this works, of uh, huh, a special show next week. I got some questions, and we're going to get some answers. Hopefully, we're going to get those answers live right here live on the stream I am my plan is to have a co-host next week let's see if I can pull this off I'll know here probably hopefully by the end of the weekend I'm gonna have to try to have a co-host yeah by the end of the weekend by the end of this weekend I'm gonna hopefully know <sighs> with a million other things I gotta do well it won't take long to figure this out I want you GPT to be my co-host for at least one show. We're going to ask you questions, try to get some answers. Kind of a Q&A for AI. What's it going to tell me? It's going to be my co-host. As long as it works good. If not, we'll come up with some other topic. I do want to continue down the path of AI because it is fa fascinating. I think if we use it right, it is going to be a huge benefit for us. So, I am probably, at this point, looking at jumping up to maybe every week for my show. Now we are moving on. I am going to, I'm working on some different graphics, different uh, show flows, and yeah, I want to move it up to weekly, especially now that I'm getting into this, this AI stuff, some of the stuff that I'm, other stuff, programming stuff I'm doing, um, the website I'm putting together, I'm putting it together website, but I'm like, you know what, I can actually incorporate some of this HTML, CSS, and JavaScript into my videos, my streams, my live streams. So we may be seeing some stuff on graphics coming out there. We'll show you how to program some of that, the basics for HTML and JavaScript and stuff like that. We're going to get into Python programming, Adrenal programming. That's where we can build our robots. I did uh, uh, have it create some um, code for me already for the Arduino. Um, can't remember where that is, right here. Here, I did create a DC motor controller here. I haven't had a chance, but it looks like the, the uh, information is pretty accurate here. I just haven't had a chance to run it um, yet. I need to get all that pulled together. I don't even have a motor right now for my my board, so we'll get it there. I got some motors lying around that I should be able to uh, put some capacitance, resistance, everything in there and get it to be able to work off of the required voltages. So there's a lot of things I'm going to do here. But in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. And, uh, See you next week, next Thursday, same time, 7 o'clock Eastern time. And if I don't, if I'm not here, I'll let you know. I'm going to try to get this uh, scheduled here and then put it on the schedule here the next day or so. Um, so you guys can sign up for it and be notified when it uh, shows up or when the stream comes to, is coming on. Now, join me on Instagram and Facebook. Follow me on YouTube. Follow me everywhere. I'm not on X. Not on TikTok. Just never really got into those. X kind of is a downer for me at the moment. We'll see. I may go back to it a little bit. I'm not too happy with, with where that platform's gone. Um, and I may find some other platforms besides YouTube and Facebook. We'll see. Um, but follow me in those places journey through my brain. Till then, till next week, have a wonderful week, and we will catch you very soon.